Hey family, welcome back to DTV. My name is Devin Gemma and thank you very much for watching our channel. Today I'd like us to talk about the importance of knowing if God is seeking for our attention as brethren. And But before I do that, let us look into worshipping God. I want us to thank God for His mercies, for His love and kindness towards us, for what He's doing to us on a daily basis. I want us to acknowledge God for who He is, not for what he does. again and um, remember that our theme says signs that God will show you that he wants your attention remember that we said today the teaching says what kind of signs can God show if he needs a person's attention because people have become so busy in life the Bible says in the last days, people will be very, very busy. They will be busy for God. They will be busy for prayer. They will be busy for the will of God. So the busyness that comes and, and takes over us as people, it causes God to move away from us. And when God is no longer in our space, we begin to feel naked. Like when even Adam and Eve, when they ate the forbidden fruit, the power of God or the presence of God in them was immediately taken out of them and they started feeling that God is no longer there. And luckily with them, they could sense that something has happened in them and they wanted, they seek, they immediately sought out to, to know what is happening with them because they have felt that something is happening. But unfortunately, in the days that we are currently living in, we as brethren, even when we feel that the presence of God has left us, we continue our normal life as if nothing happens. We continue, we do whatever we are doing as if nothing happens, yet we can feel that there is something that is not there. So today I'm inspired to teach by the kind of signs that God can implement to show you that he is looking for your attention. So I have written a few notes on my book, which I am going to read to you as we continue with this teaching. And the first thing that I have written here, it says, we have forgotten the Lord and his rules. We have allowed every wrong to happen in our land. Our land is barren and our water is bitter. Hence, we are not producing. The economy of our country is going down. People are being unemployed. People are losing jobs. The land is barren. The water is bitter. We are faced with sicknesses and diseases that we don't even know where they are coming from. It is because we have moved away from God. So this is one of the signs that God can use to get your attention. If God says that you are too busy for him, he can implement such things to, to take your, 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 your attention from whatever you are attending to in order to point at him. If you are sick, for example, people seek God when they start feeling that they are sick, they can't walk, they can't do anything, immediately that pushes them to seek for God's intervention. Let's look at a few examples on how God had to enforce his way to get people's attention. Um, number one, we're looking at uh, Acts chapter 9 verse 3, we find brother Saul on his way to Damascus to kill the brethren because in his heart he believed that what he was doing was for God and it was in line with God's will. But then on his way there, the Holy Spirit, it struck him on his way there. He loses his sight. He immediately becomes blind. The Bible tells us that he was blinded for three days. But when he was blind, that's when he, he God got the attention from him. Because remember, all along he thought what he was doing was right. He thought he knew what he was doing and he thought he was led by God. Yet he was going against the will of God. The Bible tells us that when he lost his sight, the first thing that he did 
when he had a vision of the Holy Spirit, when the Holy Spirit was asking, Saul, what are you doing? Why are you killing my people? Why are you killing the church? The, the thing that the first thing that Saul said to the Holy Spirit said, what do you want me to do? Because Saul at that time, he was a point of mercy. He was a point of having no power. He had no strength. He lost his sight, meaning that he could not even see where he was now going. His direction was immediately cut off, so he had no direction. So God had to make him to lose his sight to catch his, to catch his attention. The Bible tells us that when he immediately lost his, his, his eyesight, when God started speaking to him and asking him, what are you doing? Why are you killing my people? He then asked God, what do you want me to do? All along what he was doing, he was saying to himself, I am doing it for God. I am killing the people for God. Yet he was not doing the right thing. It caused him to lose his sight. Some of us today are blind because of things we used to do when we, were, we could see. We forgot in God because we thought our eyes can help us. Our eyes can take us wherever we want to go. So this is one of the signs that God can use. Some people you will lose your eyesight. Some you will be blind. Sometimes you're even you're not even thinking, talking about a spiritual blindness, but we're talking about physical blindness where you lose your sight because you and you and God is busy calling you, calling you, calling you. Your eyes are telling you to look at something else. God says, don't look at that. Look at me. Your eyes are busy telling you to look at what you're not supposed to look at. So this is one of the signs that God can use to take to take your eyes away from you in order to get your attention, brothers and sisters. So as we continue with the signs that we see that God has done in order to catch his people's attention as we continue. Another point that I have written down here, it's when Moses, brother Moses, was on his way to do his daily routine, whatever that he was going to do, we don't know because <laughs> We know the history of our brother, that brother Moses was a man with strength because we found him somewhere in the Bible. The Bible tells us that he even killed a man. So in his way to where he was going, he is caught, his attention is caught by the flame of fire. He sees the bush burning, but to his surprise, the bush is not, uh, the flame are not finishing the bush, but there is fire. So this this one, uh, this word, we found it in Exodus chapter 13, verse 21. So as I read it, it's in my spirit, God tells me that some of us, we are busy with our own things. We are busy with our own businesses. We are busy with our own lives, our career. Some of us are thinking what to, what to do to make more money. But then the Bible says first brother Mo Moses was on his way to continue with his daily routines. Suddenly there was a fire burning and that caught his attention. So some of us today, we might be going through fire. Some of us, it might not even be a case where we are seeing the fire from a distance, but we are going through that fire. It is it is burning, burning. It is not killing us, but it is hurting us on a daily basis. It is the attention, this fire. God will use it to get your attention. God wants you to hear him speak to you. God wants to hear you. He wants to hear you listening to his word, listening to his voice. Because some of us, most of the time, Things that we do, things that we commit ourselves into, we have forgotten God, we have forgotten to pray, we have forgotten to fast. Some of us, we are going through stress and depression of what is currently happening. Maybe you are on the verge of losing your job and you are saying to yourself, how am I going to pay for this car? How am I going to pay for this house? All of a sudden, you are going through those things. We have forgotten that you are not just any person, but you are a child of God. You are not just a mere person walking by the streets, but you have been chosen to be one of the children of God. All of a sudden, you have been moved. Your thoughts have moved from you, from you being a child of God. Now you are constantly wondering. You are constantly thinking, how am I going to go through this situation? How am I going to go through this? How am I going to pay?
being caught in our own problems, our own issues, it is because we have forgotten that we are children of God. The Bible has assured us that as we have received Christ, received Christ as our Lord and Savior, He will take care of us. God even said we must not worry. He is in charge of everything that goes on around us, our, uh, on our side, wherever we are. He is forever there. But we have decided to take upon it our, ourselves, our own bodies, to carry our own problems. The Bible says, Jesus said one day, whoever believes in must take the cross and follow him. Our job is to take the cross and follow Jesus. How do we do that? By sharing the good news to the people of God, by sharing the Bible scriptures to the people of God. But now we have decided to put the cross down and take our problems. Now we are being pressed down by the problems and the things that we are currently going through. We have forgotten God. Now God is looking at what can I do to catch their attention? What can I do to bring them back to me? Now in this case we find that God had to use fire to catch the attention of Moses. I don't know what you are going through, but I want to tell you this today, that whatever you are going through, it is the sign that God is looking for your attention because you have decided to take that problem upon yourself. You have decided to take that issue upon yourself. The Bible says we must put everything on. We, the Bible says, Bring unto me all your worries and problems. I will carry them for you. But because we've decided to carry it for ourselves, look at the situation we are finding ourselves in. Now God has to use drastic measures to catch our attention back to him. God has to use drastic situations to get, to get us back to him. Children of God, let us do ourselves a favor. Let us go back to God before we run out of time. Because one thing for sure, time is not waiting for us. And time loss can never be replaced. Let us go back to him. Let us use what we are currently going through as a sign that God wants our attention. As a sign that God is seeking for our attention as we continue to the next point. In Exodus chapter 7, verse 13 to 17, we find that God had to release different types of plagues to get Pharaoh's attention. God had to do a whole lot of things to get Pharaoh to get Pharaoh to release the children of Israel from his hand. God had to use different situations whereby even Pharaoh had to use his firstborn son because he didn't listen to God. God used a lot of things. He threw them with frogs. There was blood in the water. There were lies, flies, livestock was dying, boils, hay, locust, darkness, death of every firstborn son that was there. God had to do these things in order to catch the attention of Pharaoh because Pharaoh was very stubborn. Pharaoh believed that he was God, I think, because he was ready to fight with God. Even though Moses has gone to him a couple of times telling him that God has sent me to tell you to release his children, but Pharaoh still refused. So there are people today whom God has been calling. God has been calling you. God has been calling you. God has done so many things to show you that he wants your attention, but you are refusing. Some of us, some of the people, they even have lost things along the way. They have lost their material things. Some have lost children. God is so using those things to say, Come to me. I want to use you. People are saying, no, they are not coming. Then they are, we find ourselves that God has to use all different of other painful and helpful things for him to catch our attention. Our attention has been moved from God. We are focusing on the things of the world. We are focusing on the, on the happenings of the world. We have moved from trusting God. We have gone to trusting our own money. We have moved from trusting the will of God. We are trusting our own will. We have moved from trusting the strength of God. We are trusting our own strength. We must come back to God, children of God. We need to come back to God. Because without God, we have no life. Without God, we have no direction. There is no direction at all. So let us go back to God. Let us go back to God. Let us not wait until even worse and painful things happen before God can catch our attention. Because it can get bad. It can get very bad. We need to go back to God as we continue with another point. For example, let's look at what we are currently facing globally. 
we are having a scourge of coronavirus that is affecting every country. Every country is at its knees. Every country is suffering. Every country's economy is crumbling down. What is happening? Is it not a sign that God wants our attention? What have we done as a country to cause God to, to send this kind of sign to get us back to him? Look at what is happening. Coronavirus is claiming a lot of people in Italy, people are dying. Look at how many people are infected on a daily basis. Are we sure that it is not God? It is, is it not one of God's other signs that he wants us back? God wants us back, people. We are children of God. We are the people of God. We cannot do anything without him. I know someone is going to ask me this question. Is coronavirus coming from God? If we read our Bible, we know that the Bible tells us about the end time signs. And one of the, 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 the signs is the diseases that will plague the whole world. And we know what are all these signs leading to. So yes, it might be a sign. God wants us back to him. I want to plead with my brothers and sisters, especially those who have tasted being Christians before and have backslided. I want to ask you, go back to God. God is looking for you. God wants your attention. Go back to God. You are a child of God. God is a good father. God is a wonderful father. The Bible says, if my people who are called by my name can humble themselves, I, as their God, I will forgive them. I will heal their land. Our land is barren, people. Our land needs God's intervention. If we don't go back to God, where are we going to go to? If we don't go back to God, what is our hope? If we don't go back to God, what do we think we will achieve? Our whole lives are depending on God. Our beings are depending on God. Because without God in our lives, there is no life. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this session. We thank you for this teaching, O oh Lord. Father, we pray for your children. May they remember you. May they go back to you, O oh Lord. May you send the Holy Spirit to them, O oh Lord. May you go to them, O oh Lord, with your Holy Spirit and remind them that they are your children and they belong to you. Father, I pray for the whole world. I pray for the whole world, O oh Lord. I pray for your sons and daughters, O oh Lord. Those who have been mis misled by the devil, O oh Lord. May you return them back to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, guys.